So I just want to welcome everybody that um, is tuning into YouTube. Uh, my name is Limar Weber, and I am an educator for Live with Prima. Tonight we're going to create this um, fabulous. I don't know why it's not closing at the moment, but we're going to create this fabulous cigar box. It's actually an ornament box, so I'll be showing you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down. If um, if you have any questions, just um, put it on the chat. For those of you that are watching the recording, um, you are more than welcome to send us um, your questions and we will have those an answered for you. So let me go do that right now. I'll switch cameras, make sure that it's in focus. Here we go, here we go. I'm gonna put this up just a tiny bit. Sorry about that. Just trying to get it, there we go. How's that? I wonder if I should take this one off. The pink is too pink. This pink mat is a little bit too pink. I think this is a little bit better. What do you think? Think that's a little bit better? I don't know. I kind of seem to think so. So, um, it's got my hairs in it, too. That's just crazy. So, hang on. I'm just looking at the questions here. Um, all right, good. So this is the box. Um, it's it's really fun. There's a lot of little details in here. Um, I used a lot of shimmer, um, glitter, and stuff. So it's really really fun. I'll show you how to create um, this dimension. But then what's really cool is that um, this is the inside. It's really pretty. And then um, you can just you know you can give this as a gift to a friend, right? So this one I did not make. It's just you know one that you can buy a cheapo uh, one at the store. This one I used. It's a glass one that I used the German, uh, what do you call that? The German glass uh, uh, glitter, but it's the really fine stuff. And then this one I also made, which I'm not like loving it, but um, it's very, I don't know, slightly, it's cute. It's just not, you know, overly my style, but um, I, I was just having some fun playing around with some Prima products. So lots of uh, Prima lace and Prima bling and Prima paper and lots of Lindy Stamp Gam shimmer. So um, you can do this as a gift for Christmas. Like what, how, what an awesome little gift, right? To give to a friend, right? Cause you know, most people, I mean, as long as I celebrate Christmas, of course, right? So um, let's go ahead and get started and create one of these. My husband does own a cigar shop. So it's kind of easy for me to get cigar boxes, but I know you guys can get them anywhere. Like I think even Michael sells cigar boxes. So not really all that hard to find one, correct? So I'll make sure, Steph, that I go really slowly about the products that we're going to use tonight, okay? And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, actually, let me bring this back for just a moment. One of the things I wanted to talk about was the fact that, you know, um, this is not traditional Christmas, right? It's pink and it's teal. Of course, there's teal in there, my favorite color. Um, but, you know, you don't always have to be traditional, right? So uh, I'm going to show you what the box started out as. Um, and some people are asking here, what did the box look like before? And I'll totally show you that in just a moment. So, um, you know, you can totally go untraditional. You can call this, you know, shabby, sh shabby chic Christmas. All right. So this is what the box looked like before. Okay, it's just a, and I pre-cut some of it already, so I'm just going to take that out. It's just a, you know, one of those um, wooden cigar boxes, the really light ones. Okay, it's not the super heavy ones. Um, I just really liked the size of it because it fit the ornaments really well and hubby uh, ended up having two. Oh, look, it's $19 per cigar, in case you're wondering. Um, and so why don't we go ahead and it's got the nasty tobacco smoke, affects everyone, blah, blah, blah. So you can just rip that off. It doesn't really matter because um, we're going to just cover it up anyway, but I'm just going to go ahead and at least take that part off. Okay, so let me show you the collection that we're going to use tonight. And I love, 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 love the Anna Marie collection. And I'm just pulling the papers. So I'm going to just put this off to the side for a moment. The, one of the reasons I love this paper, it's got the music notes. This one is, like I said, the Anna Marie collection. And it's 846336. But look at the other side. Um, this is not as Christmassy, so it might be a little bit tougher to do something Christmassy. But I think this is really beautiful. Um, you know, a lot of Christmas uh, papers and stuff have the music notes. 
So I thought this was kind of wonderful. Um, we're going to use some more of the collection. I'm just grabbing it. It just got stuck. Just give me a second here. Um, <clears throat> I'll be using this paper as well from the collection. This one is um, Night Nightingale 846-367. Okay. And um, the white, right? Because the white looks really great with the teal. And then there is, I'll just show you some of the other papers in the collection. This one's really fun. And this would actually be really cute for Christmas. Um, I'm not sure about this side, but I mean, you know, if you're adventurous. And then the other one that I'm going to use is this other teal, which is really, really pretty. And it's got the dresses and stuff. And this is actually the paper I used to create the ornament. Okay. And then this is the back side, which could totally be Christmassy. All right. And um, you can buy it in the double-sided sheets, you guys. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. You can buy it in the double-sided sheets. Or if you want all the papers, you can actually buy the 12 by 12 collection kit. And the 12 by 12 collection kit is 846-381, okay, which is really, really pretty. It's got a ton of stuff. It's got, like, you could do this as the Christmas uh, paper as well as, like, look at all these stickers that come along with it um, and tags and such. So lots and lots, look at these, isn't that gorgeous? So lots to play with. So we'll be using that tonight. So let me just move the paper off to the side. And then um, what else are we gonna use? We're also going to use, I'm just grabbing it here. We're gonna use some Lindy's. So here are the two Lindy's that we'll be using tonight. I'll be using um, two Glit Spritz um, by Lindy's and this one is Gecko Green. Okay, so glitz is more of a shimmer and then scintillating silver. Okay, two of my favorites. And then a few other things which I'm just pulling up right now. And then of course I'll go through them again later. But we'll also be using um, this wonderful flower. This is uh, Odette Aqua 566586. Um, this one is the Giselle Hayes, which is 566388. We're going to be using the gorgeous Jubilee uh, resins, right? Um, so these are just so gorgeous. So we'll, we'll be using that. We'll have this left over. Um, this would look great on an ornament, actually. This one is 569976. And then this stamp set is a little bit older, which I love. It's from the Tea Time collection and it's 559373. And what I love about it is the script. So pretty. So we'll be using that tonight. And I have one more. I Oh, I have two more items. I'm sorry. One of them is from uh, as well from the Anna Marie collection. It's the wood embellishments. Check these out. These are so pretty. You have bows, you have music notes, little dresses, little hearts. They, I love you kind of moved over. So we'll be using some of the hearts tonight and some of the beautiful um, music notes. And I'll show you a couple ways to do that. And what else did I say? Is that it? Nope. There's one more thing. And then this guy right here is a, a little bit of an older vine, but one of my favorites. Um, it's the Breton Vines Chronicle, which is 552671. All right. Any questions? Questions, questions? No, no, no. And we'll be using some ribbon. And I have a couple other items that we'll be using, but I'll um, I'll talk about them as we go along because I think that'll be a little bit easier, okay? So let's get moving. I'm going to pull the paper out and some of the ones that I already um, pre-cut. What did I do with them? They're right here. So what I've done is a square one like this is so easy to use because, like, literally you just, you just cut. So... Um, I'm using this white paper. I'm going to make it slightly different than the other one. Okay, so I already pre-measured and pre-cut. So I'm just going to go ahead and I really, because I'm adding so many embellishments on this, I really do like to use something that's really heavy. So 3-in-1 by Beacon works really well, but gel medium actually works quite well as well. Um, I'll, I could use that for the sides, but for the top, I really like to use something heavy as it's going to have a ton of embellishments. So you want to really make sure that your um, this paper is really stuck on because you really don't want it to go anywhere, do you? Oh, look, I'm putting it upside down. 
This is what happens sometimes when I do things live. There we go. There we go. Crisis averted. We are all good, my friends. So I'll just put that right there, just like so. Oh, let's see. Allow links. It won't let me. But Steph, Steph, if you can allow links, that would be really great. Um, and then we're going to add this one right in the middle. Okay, so we're going to do just like that. It's not how I had it in the other one, but that's okay. I actually really, to be quite honest with you, I ran out of this pink paper. They didn't send it to me, so um, I had to, you know, improvise. It's just what you do, right? I'm good at improvising. I've had to do it many times before. It's my specialty, it seems like, lately. Improvising. <laughs> All right. Okay, so just like that. Now, I know that a lot of you um, are intimidated sometimes by doing boxes. And um, I'll show you how I, how I make mine. This is for the inside. So we'll just go ahead, since I have it already cut, let's go ahead and just add it right on there. And then we don't have to fiddle around with it. It's slightly larger, but that's okay. I cut it just a little bit too big, which is not a big deal. So we'll just add, and because this is going to have quite a bit of embellishments as well, then I'm just really getting it on there. Getting it on there really, really good. Okay. And just make sure you like really flatten it out so that you do not get any air bab bubbles. Yeah, so like I said, a lot of you are intimidated by doing altered projects and you kind of stick to layouts or canvases or art journal pages or things like that. Um, and I, I find that the U.S. tends to do more altered projects than um, some of the other countries. Uh, oh, good. Is the links working? Yay. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Thank you, Steph. You rock. All right. So that's the inside for now. All right. So what you want to do is, you know, it's obviously really, really ugly in there. And the inside is not bad, right? But we can still paint it up. So what I'm going to do is I really, um, for those of you that don't have um, the Prima craft knife, it's like the must tool to have of the year. If you don't have one, you got to get one. It cuts like absolute butter. And that's what I kind of love about it. Um, I find that I tend to use my craft knife so often that, um, you know, when it, I didn't have the Prima tool, I would always rip things and it just, it, things just didn't quite work for me very well. So I really like, um, I really do like it. So what I like to do um, to cut this is I'll show you my technique and you guys can do it whichever way, um, you know, works for you. But what I like to do is I like to add adhesive here on the sides and I tend to, whoa, hello there. I tend to use my Suquain tape. You guys have score tape um, in the United States. But here in Canada, it's Sue Queen. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the same company. So um, I just like to add it right to the top because I think it's really easy. Uh, and you really do want to get right in the tip there. Okay. So that's kind of how I do it. And then I just go ahead and take my Prima craft knife and I take that right off. Come on, baby. Come off. Come off, baby. There we go. And you're more than welcome to use um, a wet adhesive, of course, but I find this a little bit easier, maybe not on camera all the time, but um, so just find the right way. And what I like to do is I literally, I don't know if the camera will catch it, so I'll try to do it so that the camera can see it. Um, I line it up right to the edge, okay, just like so, so that I have oops, the least amount of cutting to do and sometimes I just open this up and I know you probably can't see this very well but I'm just going to slice a little bit of the extra that you know is hanging off of there and it's really easy then you know it's lined up perfectly sometimes measuring doesn't always quite get it just perfectly and so I tend to like this method a little bit better than um, the measuring method I just find it looks better I alter a lot of things and so um, I've kind of tried many different ways of doing things and um, this way really really works for me so and you kind of have that perfect edge right just make sure you take that off right just gorgeous 
perfect, perfect. And don't worry about this part. It'll get covered anyway. Okay, and then we're going to do the back side, same thing. And always make sure that you have it going the right way because it's music notes, right? So it's not a pattern that you want to kind of make a mistake on, if you know what I mean. And this one has a little bit of raised edges, but no worries. We can still get in there um, and get those done. So don't you worry about that. I'm really excited to alter this guy um, to put all the fun embellishments on because they're so much fun. Okay, and then on the tips here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of my glue. Okay, just like that. Perfect, perfect. And this part right here, the flap part, I'm going to cover with white a little bit later, so don't you worry. And then we just flatten this out really, really good and peel this tape right off. Okay. Come on, baby. I got to tell you, um, doing an altered project like a box on camera is a little bit harder than doing a scrapbook page <laughs> or an art journal. It's not, not quite the same, same angles and stuff, but that's okay. I'm getting it done. I'm getting it done, baby. It's not bad. So I'm lining it up as best as I can. Okay. Uh -oh. Don't worry about that part. It'll get covered anyhow. Let's see. Does the flap still open? A little bit. Yep. Okay. Fabulous. So now I'm just going to go ahead. What I'm going to come down here. I'm going to take my craft knife. This is really easy. And you literally cut right on the edge. It even has the little humps and I got it right to the edge there so I don't even need to worry about that hump and then this guy I have to change my blade I've been using um, I've been using it so much that it doesn't cut as well but this thing cuts like butter honestly I've had this blade now for I don't know like 10 projects so really, really cool. Okay, so we got it in here. And this is going to be white anyhow, so don't even worry about that. Let's get the next um, piece. So a couple more times, and we're done that part, and we can go ahead and alter the box a little bit. Okay, so we're going to get it right to the edge. This is the more tedious part. I could have done it before the show, but I kind of wanted to show you the technique. So, um, you know, sometimes we struggle as educators to, you know, what do we do? so that we don't bore you, um, but at the same time still show you, you know, certain techniques. So it's kind of like, sometimes we struggle with that, right, Steph? I don't know. At least maybe that's what I struggle with. Maybe that's just me. But I'm pretty sure it's universal. If Carrie was here, I think she would say the same thing. Yeah, the blades do last uh, many projects. I think I've kind of overused this blade a little bit. But, you know, it's fine to overuse them, right? Okay, so last last part is this guy. And I'm just going to rip some of this. You know what? If your cigar box has, like, if it's a real cigar box, it'll have, like, extra little pieces hanging. You just want to make sure you remove them. So I could go ahead and use this one. It's not a big deal. It goes the wrong way, but actually you won't even be able to notice. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. Um, I do have another sheet of it, but you know what? I'm just going to do it. What do you think? And I wonder if I should get Hubby to mail this to somebody uh, that wins it at the show because you know what? I don't know if I'll need two of these boxes. So I think maybe we'll pick a winner tonight. And I leave Monday morning and it's a holiday here, but maybe I can get hubby to uh, mail it on Tuesday to a winner. What do you guys think? And maybe you can have the ornaments that's in my other box since we're not making the ornaments tonight. All right, just like that. Fabulous. 
fabuloso. Just like that. And I'm not worried about the bottom part because we're not going to see it. All right. So just like that, we've got it all covered, right? And you can see the black, but no worries because we're going to alter that in just a moment. So you can take um, an acrylic paint dauber. This is an Adirondack, you know, snow cap. Um, you can use, you know, any, you know, Galleria white. You can use your gesso. You can use really anything. So I'm going to go ahead. I have some titanium white and it covers really well. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. It's, it's almost done. So I think I just want to use it. Um, oh boy. See, it gets, this is what I use my blade for sometimes too. So you need a, a Prima tool to cut the gunky stuff that happens from not closing your paint properly, which I am so totally guilty. Guilty as charged. All right. I am so bad sometimes. Look at that. It is like caked on there. I think we might have to use gesso. Okay, gesso it is. Or this paint right here. Let's use this guy. All right. And I just take it right out of the thing because I think it's a little bit easier. And I'm just going to take a little foam brush. So the, before I do all the sides and stuff, I'm going to do the inside. And so I just go ahead with my foam brush. And we're going to go ahead. And I want it. I really like the wood look. So I kind of want like a light um, stroke of paint. I, I want some of that, the wood grain to still show through. So I am only going to put one coat. And the other reason I'm going to put one coat is you'll see, because we're going to make it shimmery and shiny inside. And I'm not sure I give you a good look of, of the other one, but we're actually using some Lindy Stamp Ink sprays in here in the wood. And it looks so gorgeous. Okay, so you can actually, um, because we're spraying some sprays, you can be pretty rough with your painting because it's really not going to show through that much. Um, so that's just a, a little hint, and you'll see that in just a moment. Just a moment. You may need a couple coats on the black piece. I did. So um, if we don't get that to tonight, just something to note. You may have to go over oh, once the that first layer is dry, you'll have to add a second coat on the black. Okay. Just a little note to self for you guys. Note to self. Sorry, I'm off camera. See, it's hard to to paint an altered project on camera. <laughs> Too funny. And then you just want to get right in there as well. Okay. Don't worry about if you get the edges because we're actually going to do that purposefully anyway, getting those edges nice and white. And it kind of covers up some of your imperfection, um, imperfect lines if you if you cut a little bit imperfectly. This is um, this happens to be like an acrylic. Oh, no, this is a Adirondack, Adirondack by Ranger. OK, so and it's called Snowcap, but you can use any paint any acrylic paint that you want. It's just acrylic paint. Okay. It doesn't have to be fancy. Nothing fancy folks. I just have a ton of paint because you know I do a lot of canvases and stuff, but um you can you can buy just any acrylic paint that you want. One of the things you will notice is the cheaper the paint though, sometimes the less pigment. So you know you'll have to do it maybe a few more times a few a couple more coats than if you use a little bit more of an expensive paint. But that's, you know, that's about it. I wouldn't worry too much. And then I'm just going to get the edges here a little bit. Just a little bit of the edges. And on the show, I'm not going to worry probably about doing a second coat, but that's what I would do. Um, that's what I did with my other one. Just like that. Okay. And let's give it one quick heat set. And I'm just going to just take out some of the pooling, if there is any. Okay, just like that. I'm going to give it a quick heat set. Do we have any questions?
Aww. I'll miss you guys too. I will definitely miss you guys for sure, but I promise you I'll have fun and I'll try to blog. I'm taking my laptop with me, so I'll be answering emails and such, so it's not like I'll be, you know, gone forever and you'll never be able to talk to me. So I'm going to do the edges right here as well. Did I do the edges? Yes, I did. Okay. I'm going to do the edges right here. I can't even remember. I think I've, it's been a month since, you know, I did this project. I can't even remember. Um, you know, for those of you that don't know, us um, educators at Live with Prima, we, you know, we create our projects a little bit ahead of time so um, so that we can, you know, get the show done faster. I know sometimes people wonder, like, how do we get this done so fast? Well, we prep, uh, you know, usually a month ahead um, so that we're able to do that with you guys so that, um, you know, you get, and so what I'm going to do, remember that black piece that I, that was kind of, that I didn't cut quite correctly? No worries. I'm just going to go ahead. I just did. I just pulled a step. I said, no worries. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go ahead with my foam brush and fill it in there. And it creates that fun white little border, which is very shabby and snowy and yummy. So you want to do that. And you want to do that right here too on all the edges. Cause you want to make sure all the edges are kind of the same. And a foam brush actually works really well for this technique. Cause it's very foamy and feathery. Okay. So you want to get that all right there, all those little edges and it's very snowy. And you, it's, it's so great cause now you actually can't tell the imperfections. So, um, really cute little easy, easy peasy technique to learn. All right. So how many of you are here from Australia that are coming to my classes? Anybody? Anybody from Australia? And if you're not, you should. It's going to be fun. I don't think there's that many spots left. I know there's some spots left in Sydney. Um, where else do we have some spots left? I think there's a few spots left in Gladstone. Um, what is that? Uh, like, forgive me if I say, is it Brisbane area? Um, so check that out. Gladstone and it's scrapbook fantasies. Um, where else? I think that's it. And I'm just going to get the edges right here. There's a store in, um, Victoria that is also hosting me. That's all on my blog though. Okay. So now I'm just going to give this a very quick heat set and we'll go ahead and start embellishing and spraying. Oh, there's paint on my hands. There's still paint. Just going to get the edges here really good and I'm not worried too much and I'll show you why I'm not worried too much about that area in particular. Okay, so here we go. The next thing that I'm going to do is I have these, um, I, I have these flat back pearls. Um, they're really tiny and I love them. I don't have that many, but I really wanted to use them on this project because I thought it would be really cool. And what it does is it really covers, if you see the imperfection of the box, um, what it does is it covers it completely. So I'm going to go ahead and line, can you guys still see? I'm going to put the camera down just a tad. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some glue. And for these, because they're a little bit heavy, I, I do like to use the three in one or Fabri-Tac works really great. And I'm just going to make one string if you're gonna use your glue gun you guys please be careful no you know no burnt fingers please 
I know some of you like to use your hot glue guns, but you know, I'm starting to get away from mine because I have gotten burnt so bad. Um, and I cracked so much. It's just, it's not worth it. I need my hands, you know, to, to create. So it's just not worth it for me to, to get hurt like that. And I just want to show you how beautiful it looks. See how it finishes it off. I know it's a little bit off focus. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the tri on the tip there. So let's do that. Whoops. My glue farted a little bit. It's having some bowel issues apparently. Some glue bowel issues. No worries. You'll be okay, glue. This too shall pass. Okay, just like that. You know, I have to tell you, I was laughing the other day. I actually, I don't, um, people ask me, do you ever watch your shows? I'm like, hell no. I don't want to hear myself talk. So I, um, I decided to watch one the other day. Oh my gosh, I was laughing so hard. I was like, that's what I sound like. <laughs> you know how we don't realize what we actually sound like, sound like in real life? It's pretty hilarious. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and add another one right here. Come on, baby. <laughs> I'm glad I'm making you laugh. Oh, boy. I had a stressful day today. But at least I got to have my, um, my eyebrows done, my hair cut. It's the simple things in life, you know? All right, just like this. So pretty. Look how, look how, like, Perfect, the box is starting to look, right? Just perfectly manicured. All right, so next, um, what we're gonna do is we wanna get a little bit of the white on there as well. So I'm just gonna take kind of my leftover paint and just make this a little bit more snowy. Just a little bit more snowy, even on the pink a little bit. And almost like a dry brush effect, if you will, okay? Just makes it a little snowy. All right, fabulous. Let's go ahead and add the um, brooch right in the front there. So this kind of will be, this is the resins by the Jubilee Collection, 569976. Okay. And I love this thing. It's just so gorgeous. You can do it this way. You can do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. And it's going to sit about right there. And it's kind of like the opening. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a must-have for sure, right? Just like that. And then because resins tend to be a little bit heavier, um, I do like to, to use the three-in-one as well. And I have to tell you, you know, um, I have projects that um, get moved around so much, and um, the only glue that I can really trust is this three-in-one. Some of the other stuff has popped off and it drives me crazy, especially if I have to teach at multiple locations and my stuff starts to fall apart. So, or if you're giving it to somebody, right? Um, you just, you want to make sure that what you're giving somebody doesn't pop off their project, right? So just something to note. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take um, our doily. So where did my doily go? It was here a second ago. Here we go. And I don't know the size of this, but this is the small one, and this is the middle one, <laughs> if that even makes any sense at all. So you kind of want this one, this middle one. And I, I don't have the actual packaging, so I can't even tell you how big it is, all right? But we're going to add it to about right there, okay, just like so. So I like to add it, and then I cut it. It's just how I do it. You don't have to do it. And I'm not gluing it on the edges. I'm literally just gluing it on the circle part. Okay. Almost like a half circle. Okay. And then about right there. Just like that. And then really squish it and get all that glue to spread all the way to the edges. And then it'll get right in there. Fabulous. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and just cut this. This is not the right scissors, by the way. 
Let's grab my Old Faithful, which you guys know I love. I love these guys. All right, just like that. There's probably an easier way to do it, but this is how Lee Moore does it. I probably could have measured and cut before I did that. But there we go. Good enough, right? And then don't throw this out. Don't, don't, don't. Don't throw this out. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut that piece right there. And you're going to add it right here. Okay. Never waste. You guys know I never waste anything. Must use your scraps. It's a must, a must. Okay. And then you'll cut the excess pieces off, of course. So I'll cut, trim the edges. There we go. Just like that. Trim the edge. Okay. Isn't that pretty? It just kind of finishes the box a little bit. It kind of gives it a really beautiful um, effect. And so you want to do the exact same thing here. So you're going to add a little bit of doiliness to the other side. Doiliness. It's a new word I invented. Some doiliness. That's right. So next time you use doilies, say I you need some doiliness. Because this glue um, takes a little bit to dry, I have the time to be able to kind of move it around. So I don't need to worry too much. There we go. Doesn't, the, both sides don't need to be perfectly symmetrical. As long as it's pretty close, you won't be able to tell anyway. Okay, just like that. Isn't that cute? Lovely, right? And really, really easy. So that's just with one doily, you already have your thing. All right, so now we can go ahead and we're going to start doing this part, okay? Like this, this little ensemble and then this guy right here as well. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to take your flower. Your absolutely oh so lovely flower. Okay. However, it is really flat when it comes in the package. It is a dimensional flower, but as you can see, it's a little bit flat. You must fluff it up so that it looks half decent. Okay. So fluff up your flowers, people. And I sometimes like to grab it, and I almost like to just squish it a little bit. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but I really, really do. Okay. So just like that, and look, it, it already starts to give its shape. Isn't that crazy? So just like that, is it's actually that easy. What I'm going to do next is a little bit, um, one of those things that, I'm going to move this out of the way, one of those things that people, uh, not everybody loves, and it's glitter. I know, I'm going to glitter. Not everybody loves their glitter, but I love my glitter. So this is uh, from Lindy Stamp Gang, or uh, you can get it at Art Glitter, but it's Silver Moon. And um, that's one of the colors that um, we use at Lindy Stamp Gang. So what I'm going to do is you can take any glue that you want. I'm just going to go ahead and on some of the edges, very, very lightly, just apply a little bit of glue. This is, might not be the, like the perfect glue to use, but I don't care. I'm just using it. I'm just like very tiny here and there. Okay. Just a little bit of glue. On the edges of my flower just like so all right and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do now I have glue all over my hands is I'm gonna go ahead and dump a little bit of glitter all over my flower and I don't mind if I get it all over my flower because I'll shake it off and I want it to be a little bit sparkly anyway but look how oh my gosh it's so gorgeous I don't know if you guys can even see that can you guys even see the glitter? Can you see how sparkly it is? Oh my gosh, it just now gave it a beautiful Christmas feel, right? So you always want to do it on a, on a what do you call them? A tray or a, um, a piece of paper. A scratch piece of paper really works. I wouldn't use this expensive white cardstock that I have here, which is crazy. I'm not sure why I use that. And I'll just close this up so that I don't spill it absolutely everywhere. And then um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab my vine. So let's open this vine up. Okay. Just like so. And I am going to cut some of the pieces off. So the piece that I'm going to cut off, I always like to take these vines and almost cut them apart. It's kind of like my thing. I just I never like to keep them as is, right? 
Now, which one was that I cut off? I'm trying to figure it out here. I think it's this one. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece off. So almost move your vine to the side, and then this is the piece that you are going to use later. Okay. And this piece right here, I'll show you in just a moment. So grab this guy. You might want to cut just a little bit more off. Oh, just like so. And you're going to apply him about right there. Okay. He's going to look like this guy right here. Okay. So we're going to apply him with the glue, same glue I used throughout. actually kind of fun altering all these boxes just like so okay and then what I'm going to do is you can go to your Joann's or Michael's especially now that it's Christmas time and you can buy these um, cool little um, what are these called these little balls <laughs> these little balls I don't know what to call them but anyway you'll need a couple of them the little Christmassy balls um, you'll need two so I'm cutting a couple of them off and we're going to slide them right in and it just makes it so Christmassy and snowy okay. and because it takes like a moment or two to dry then you can just oh, let's cut some of that there we go just like that tuck it in right there and then one more almost cut you could cut pretty much all of the little see how it has the little knob there Cut some of it off and some of it leaves so that you can kind of slide it in. It's another, it's a good place for glue. Okay, just like that. My hands are sticky. They're sticking to the, the project. It's so funny. Hang on, I gotta grab a baby wipe because I'm sticking all over the place. I can't, I can't work like that. Oh, I'm off camera. Sorry, a little bit off frame. Limor should cut a toilet paper tube in half and turn her glue bottle over in it so she doesn't have to shake so much. Yes, I probably should do that. I used to have one sitting around here and I probably threw it out when I was cleaning out my, my desk. Okay, so let's turn this over. So that part's done. And so now we can go ahead and add our flower. So I like to go ahead and only add glue to the middle of my flower because I can still go ahead and tuck lots of things in. Okay. So just about right there first. And then I can always add more glue later. Right? Right. So we're going to add that about right there. Just like so. And then we're going to take our vine. I can't even remember how I did this. Don't laugh at me, but I was like, how did I do that? Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this guy off right here as well. Okay. Just like that. Come on, baby. There we go. There we go. And then we're going to move this guy around. And we're going to have him. Oops. You always want to play with these guys because they have wire. It's really easy to play with them. And you're going to tuck him right there so that it follows the same line as your other guy. So you're going to actually bend some of these leaves towards the other guy so that it looks like it belongs there okay so that's the whole point it's kind of like a continuity thing okay so we're going to add some glue and we're going to tuck him in just make sure that he he's fairly close to the other guy okay and you can still move your flower around next we're going to take this guy okay and we're going to add him because he's a little pine cone right so a pine cone can sit beside a flower. I've decided. I say, if I say, it's the truth, right? Just like so. It's starting to come together, right, you guys? Come together. Just like that. All right, now we're going to take our leftover guy. And there's a lot of leaves here. Okay, you probably don't need that many leaves. So I'm just going to go ahead and take one of the leaves off. This one right here. And we're going to actually use it to go right here because I think it kind of needs um, a little bit. And so we're going to tuck him right there. 
and it just kind of creates balance because we'll have some on the top. You always want to just think about balance, right? This we can kind of take off. We don't need that full little swirly thing. So I'm going to cut all of that off just like that. And then we're going to tuck this guy right in here. Okay. So let's go ahead and add that in. Okay. Just tuck him right there. Fabulous. This is what we've got so far. Can you guys see that? It's pretty, isn't it? And then we want to add a couple more of these little bulbs. I won't call them balls anymore. They're little bulbs. And I just kind of tuck them randomly to just, it's, they're kind of like, they're really fabulous little fillers. You know what I mean? They're just so pretty. So, so pretty. I just love them. So we're going to add one right there and maybe one more. I love, um, when Christmas time comes, I always scope out the Christmas section for little um, branches and stuff. It's so funny. I do that every year. Always find something new to use in my projects. And then I have it kind of year round. Can you guys see that? Cute, 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 right? Okay. Now, oh, we need one more here. Forgot. We got to balance, 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 people. It's pretty, isn't it? Just like that. All right. Now what I want to do is I've die cut um, a couple of the of these guys. This is the die I used. It's called. It's from Impression Obsession. It's the little um, leaf. I don't know what this is called, um, but let me find them. I have them right here. So I have a couple of them already die cut, and I they're just little fillers, really. Um, that's all I'm using them for. Okay. And so I'm just going to cut some of the pieces off and add them as fillers. And I just used the pattern paper I had already. And I don't mind that this is going to be kind of hanging off the page a little bit. In fact, or the box. In fact, I kind of want that to happen. So I'm, I'm totally okay with that. I'm adding it to the petals and not the page. There we go. Just like that. Little filler here and there. So I'm going to grab one more. And tuck him in right there. Just kind of gives it a little something, something. And then maybe one more. One more right here. Just for, you know, good thoughts. There we go. Fabulous, fabulous. Isn't that adorable? So what now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make our little um, ornaments that sit up at the top. So I'm going to move the box off to the side for just one moment. And so all you want to do is you can take um, a white piece of paper or your pattern paper of choice. And I'm going to grab um, a scratch. Let's see. I'm going to grab this guy right here. Okay. So the first guy, I'm going to go ahead and make um, this size. Okay. And so you can just take a pencil or a pen or whatever you have on hand. I have a pencil right here, thankfully. Thankfully, I organized my room somewhat. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that out really quickly. Okay, just like so. Okay, so that's the first one. And then the second one, you want to grab um, a white piece of paper if you have one. So a white piece of cardstock works really great. Let's see if I have it, an extra one right here. One of the other pieces actually has some, the ones in the collection kit have the white backside. So that's what I'm actually going to use. Okay. So I'm going to use one of those. And I'm going to make it slightly bigger. And this next one, I used... Which size did I use? I used this size. So the next one, I'm going to use the bigger size. And this is just a stencil you can get at your local art supply store, or you can even get it at Michael's, actually. I've seen it there. People have asked me about this stencil before. So I know you can get it at Michael's. 
Ahí. And I'm not trying to be perfect. It's just a circle. If you have a circle die, this works really great too. Or a circle punch, that's fine. I just don't happen to have a circle punch for both of those. So that's this is what I'm using. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to grab my stamp set, which is this guy right here, right? And this one is Tea Time 559-373. And we'll go a little bit faster. What time is it? Oh, I still got time. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. We're going to get this guy out. And we're going to take, I like to take, um, like, stays on or archi black archival ink. Works really, really great. Okay. And just ink it up really, really good. And I like it because it dries really fast and I don't have to worry about smudging. And then... Let's make sure it's not upside down. And then I just go ahead and stamp that. Just like so. Get it really, really good in there. Fabulous. Just like that. Pretty, right? Okay. So the next thing, we're going to bring back our um, scratch piece of paper that we had the glitter on. And the reason for that is because we're going to use the glitter again. Okay. Yes, yes, we are. And um, which glue did I use for this now? I probably used, um, you can use any liquid glue, um, glossy accents or like this Tombow or something thin works really great. Um, of course, this one's plugged. No problem. Let me see what else I've got. Not a problem. How about glossy accents? Hopefully it's not clogged, and I think it is, which is absolutely hilarious because it seems like every glue I have these days is clogged. Oops. There we go. Now we have some glossy accents. Now I broke the thing. Okay. So I go ahead like this, and I actually like to take my finger. Don't do this on the paper that you're going to um, glitter, but I almost like to spread it. Okay. So get a really fine layer. And you want to do the same thing on this guy as well. Don't get a thick layer, something really, really thin. You could also put this through your Xyron machine so that it's nice and flat and you can get that adhesive. So that really works as well. And then you want to lift and clean your hands because now you're gluey all over. Okay, just a second. Close your glossy accent so it doesn't dry out again. And then we're going to take our glitter, which is the silver moon again, and we're going to go right over top of this. Okay. Just like that. And we're going to lift it up, and I'm going to take my pliers by Lindy Stamp Gang, because I love them, and they lock. And I know you can't see quite yet, so just hang tight. Hang tight. It looks very silvery at first. Okay, but we got to get some of that gunk off. And then I just kind of burnish it a little bit. I try to wait until it's a little bit dry. So what you want to do with these guys is once the glossy accents is really nice and dry, what you're going to get, you can go ahead and burnish um, the excess glitter right off. And it's going to turn out just like this. And I don't know if you can see this, but this has um, the script on it. Can you see that? And then the teal pokes right through. So it's really, really cool um, effect. So try not to touch it until it's dry. And so I'm going to kind of set these off to the side, and maybe we can get back to it um, at the end of the show. Let's do the inside until these kind of dry a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, because see, now I touched it, and now I took some of that off. Bad, badly more. Don't do that. Okay, so we'll let that sit for a moment. And then we'll dump this right back in. Yeah, I just don't have a circle punch. Score tape, yeah. Yeah, you can totally use the score tape or the or the glue. Either one works just fine. So once it starts to dry, you can go ahead and burnish it off. Okay. So we'll have to we might have to try that one again. That one, that one didn't really work out too well. 
but that's okay. You guys get the idea. And so then all you're all you're gonna do, you guys. I maybe I won't do it tonight on the show. All you're doing is you're putting the larger one on the top, and then the second one you're gonna lift it up with a pop dot, and then add a couple strings to mimic um, a little uh, hanging ornaments. Okay, so we'll try that later. Now let's get to the inside. Okay, because I don't want to bore you to death. So for the inside of the box. Um, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to lay it down. So the first thing that you're going to do is remember the inside, you're going to take your gecko green and you're going to spray, spray, spray. And can you see the teal? It's the most perfect color to match the Anna Marie collection. Okay. And it's so shimmery. It's so yummy. I know the camera probably doesn't show its true color, but oh my goodness. And then all I'm doing is I'm just moving it around just like so, and I'm allowing it to drip kind of everywhere. But you want to make sure you do this once your paint is dry inside. So we can actually leave it just like this because once it dries, all that's going to show up is, is teal sh uh, shimmer. And this is called gecko green, okay? So just like that. And then what I did for an extra added shimmer, I grabbed my scintillating silver and it just adds a little bit more of a silvery shimmer. Okay. So just like that. And I actually added a little bit of silver shimmer right here. And I know you guys can't see that, but once it's dry, it's so shimmery. And then here as well, I just gave it a little shimmer. Okay. And then, so let's do the inside. So what you want to grab is you can do this with any ribbon of your choice, but um, I'm grabbing this ribbon and this ribbon has a little bit of history. Um, I actually use this for my wedding, um, for all my, uh, like my, my vases and stuff. And, um, I never wanted to throw it out. And my husband's like, you got to go through that basement and you got to throw out all that stuff. And I was like, I can't. So I'm like, I'll use it on life with Prima. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just couldn't bear uh, chucking this ribbon. It's so pretty. It's like, I can't. My, actually my wedding was silver and lavender. Because that was kind of the in color at that time. So what I'm doing right now is, oh, sorry, I'm off camera, is I'm just adding a ribbon to the top and to the bottom. Okay, with some glue, and I'm just holding it really, really tight. I'm going to mimic a present. Okay, I'm just grabbing a little bit of... It's just some sheer ribbon, and I'm sure you can get this at your local uh, craft store. Okay, just like that, and just like that. And so we're going to just cross it over right there and right there. Just like so. Fabuloso. Fabuloso. All right. So that's a little present, right? And the next thing is you want to make a bow with your ribbon. Really? That's too funny. Too many people have the same color. See, it's just... You know, certain times you just, um, it's funny, right, That how that happens. Everybody copies the trends that, that um, that's during their time. It's just the way it goes. We're trend people. We're crafters. We're trendy. So then we're going to go ahead and create that ribbon. I'm going to cut that piece right off because I actually don't need this piece right here. And you'll see why in just a moment. I'm not very good at making bows, however... So we'll add that right there, just like that. Got to glue. You want to just kind of move it over, make sure that I always, when I close the box, I just tuck this in and it doesn't go anywhere. And the next thing that you want to grab is your, I think it's called Tatiana flower. No, Giselle 566388. You're going to go and grab one of the white ones. Whew, looks like there's teal there. Be careful. And you're going to add that right in the middle. This is why I go through so much glue, by the way. Okay. 
And then what I like to do is I just like to go ahead, because I, I don't know how to make a proper bow, I just go ahead and grab another piece of ribbon just like this. And then I literally tuck it underneath. This is slightly too big. And so I just add a little bit of glue. I would need like that ribbon maker or something. Somebody send me a ribbon maker. <laughs> All right, and we'll need to tuck that right in, right there. And that'll be kind of our second loop, right? And I always like to play around with it. And then one more. One more, just like that. I gotta contact the ribbon companies and see if they'll send me one. Do a review on it or something. Okay, so now I have like a fancy little bow, right? Really, really cute. And then um, I wanna kinda match the rest of the project. So I wanna go ahead and take some of these wonderful little sprays again, right? And grab a couple on the bottom and a couple on the top. And so we're going to add a couple here. Just like that. And then we're going to add a couple on the top. Make sure that uh, none of them are too close to the uh, enclosure or you're not going to be able to close the, um, the lid very well. Just, just a warning, okay? And then what I want to do is I want to take my little, <clears throat> my little heart. Do you guys remember these little wooden ones? So cute. And I just go ahead and paint it with a little bit of the white paint. So just take a little brush and paint it a little bit white. And then what I like to do is I either like to spray it with a little bit of the um, glitz. So I'll just dry it really quick. But don't dry it too, too much. Or you can go ahead and you can add a little bit of the glitter. So let's get our little sheet back for a second. There's glitter flying everywhere. My computer is going to be glittery today. That's kind of the one thing I don't necessarily love about glitter but everything looks so pretty look how cute that is gorgeous little heart right so shimmery so shimmery and yummy love that love 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 so I'm gonna go ahead now and add this right to the top just like that right in the top and that my friends is pretty much it the only thing I didn't do, you guys, is I didn't put the music notes. So the music notes are the exact same thing as the um, as the other one, as the heart. And so you take these music notes. And what's so cool is that you can literally break that one piece off, and now you have two different kinds, right? So you can put one right here, and we can do it. Just wooden ones look really great, too. You can always glitter them after. But I just kind of tucked one right here, okay, and I kind of grabbed another one and just, you know, hit it about right here. And it's so pretty. It's very Christmassy. Isn't that cute? I love these little wooden ones. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm even ending with a little bit early. So that's about it. And then the only thing you want to just make sure you know, is kind of move the liquid around. I know it's still a little bit wet. And just, just move it around. Once it's dry, it'll be so shimmery. And I know the camera doesn't pick that up. Um, but trust me, it just looks so absolutely gorgeous. And then you can give this to, you know, a wonderful friend. How easy was that? Easy peasy, right? Let me switch cameras. And I'll go ahead and make the announcements. Give me just a moment. There we go. I'm back. So um, a few little announcements. Um, one of them is Canada Art Venture, you guys. Um, you want to make sure that if you're coming, um, 
please go ahead and um, get yourself registered. There's not, um, there's limited spots for this event and um, all you need is actually $50. That's it to register and it'll reserve your spots. So um, just, you know, get, get your butt over there. It's going to be myself, Carrie and Jamie teaching some fabulous classes. There's crops, there's um, amazing goodie bags. Um, the price, by the way, is uh, everything's included, like everything. So um, all your meals, your hotel room, the crop, um, all the snacks, everything. So it's, and the classes, like you don't have to pay for anything else. All right, so really, really awesome. Um, what else? Australia. Um, I don't know if Steph, if you can go ahead and uh, take them to my blog. If you put a, post a link to my blog um, for the Australia uh, tour, there's I leave on Monday and there's still some spots left in certain areas. So if you want to uh, go get your butt over there, um, hurry, 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 because um, it's almost closed. And uh, I can't wait to see you all there. Let me think. Um, what was the other... There's not that many left. Um, also, there's some spots left for the um, U.S. Anaheim adventure as well. Um, so you want to, I think there's only like 16 spots left. So those are just going to go lickety split. As soon as our projects are up, people are going to sign up. So um, there's six amazing educators. Let me see. There's myself, Frank, Steph, uh, Natalie, um, Jamie and Finnebar. Anna. So I, I did I get everybody? I hope I didn't miss anyone. So I think that's it. And then let me think here. Did I get everything? And then last but not least, Carrie is going to be on next week, which is uh, Tuesday. So you might want to tune in. She'll be doing some a fabulous project as always. Um so I think that's it for tonight. So I'm going to just say goodbye to those that are watching the recording. Thank you so much for watching. It's always a pleasure having you on here.